You're listening to Paris Search UK Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. It's Monday evening and you're listening to Joe and Gemma on the Supernatural Show. Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of the Supernatural Show with myself, Gemma, and the beautiful Jo. Good evening, Jo. Good evening, lovely lady. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm I'm really good, thank you. Yeah. So, so what have you been up to since last week? I love doing this. We love our little catch-ups, don't we? Um, the weekly roundup, in it on the Supernatural Show. I know, weekly roundup of what we've been doing. Um, I've been in North Wales this weekend. Oh, had a surprise... somebody has to go to North Wales, I <laughs> Had a surprise visitor on Valentine's Day night, so that was lovely. Was it the milkman? I've told um... him to stop it. <laughs> Unfortunately not, no. Uh, but it was no, the with him. Unfortunately <laughs> not, it was just the other half. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, we don't have a milkman around here, I don't think. So, so yeah, so Mark surprised me on Thursday by coming down. So it's been nice. Spent the weekend with little man over in North Wales. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, what have you been up to? Well, you know me, I don't, I don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> no, last, last Thursday I spent the night with um, about 50 single ladies with the team from um, Viking FM. Um, Friday. I want to hear some more about this Galentine's Ball. Oh, it was fab. It was just 50 single ladies going out for drinks, food, bit of karaoke um, and watching Bridget Jones. But it was really, really good. It was just such a laugh. I think I did see one little snippet or something of some guy getting beaten with a, a one of those blow up hammers. The inflatable hammer, yeah. That, <laughs> that 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 was for any ladies that had unresolved issues with men and they wanted to to cleanse themselves, if you will. So so poor Alex, bless him. He he's the host, one of the hosts off um, Alex and Ellie in the morning. He was wrapped in bubble wrap and then, well, what can only be described as totally abused and beaten. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a great laugh oh, it was dear. hilarious <laughs> and what did you get up to over the weekend then friday and what uh, well have you? friday i was man in the chat room um on parasearch if anybody hasn't yet listened to that episode the fundamental facts please listen to it it was a fantastic show so i i was man in the chat room for that one so Kerry and Ashley could concentrate on what they they needed to concentrate on and then on Saturday I was out investigating at Salt Marsh Hall. Oh it's a fab place isn't it? Well it's changed Joe it's changed so much like I've not been for two years and the last time I went to Salt Marsh the old servants quarters was like a derelict building. Yeah it was like that when I went as well. Yeah it's not now. As I, I kept saying, can we go to the derelict? And somebody said, you're in it. I said, no, I'm not. This is a posh hotel room. I want the derelict. And there was like, yeah. no, no, it, it's all been redesigned. So it, it's not as it was. And for me, it's taken some of the sparkle out of it. It was a good night, but mm. you know what I'm like. I like I like the anything with derelict or tunnels or... <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like that it adds to the atmosphere of the night as well yeah um, and I think look, I, I think the last time I went there as well it was freezing cold and just stood in you know like in that like little kitchen area and it I'm not joking here I could I could see the icicles on the end of my nose it was that cold yeah it's and not it, that cold anymore either 
No, I bet they've got central oh, heating lovely. if it's a nice, nice luxury um, hotel. Definitely not once did I complain I was cold. That's good then, isn't it? So <laughs> did you capture anything then? Yeah, it was a good night. Yeah, the, we we did have a good night. There were some lovely guests. Um, so yeah, on whole, really good. So a, a really good weekend, actually. That sounds good. It sounds yeah. like you've had fun. It's been, it's been a busy week. Yeah, well, we've got to apologise to our listeners because we had um, a guest lined up this evening and unfortunately he had to cancel last minute. Um, and Richard, was it Richard Case? Richard Case, yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, so unfo- something's come up, hasn't it? So Yeah, so we've had to rope in one of our mates tonight and uh... Joe you just made it sound like we'd just grab somebody off the street then it's like oi oi come here we're just gonna do a radio just smile well you never know he might he might just do that for you but we've got uh we've got the lovely Gary Fields who is a um psychic medium um it's been featured in quite a lot of magazines and he's also been featured um in and around ghost hunts um, for quite a while. Gets invited on quite a lot. So, you know, how are you, Gary? Are you all right? Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me, ladies. Nice to be grabbed in at the last minute. Well, <laughs> we do like to uh, surprise people. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thank you for the little uh, last minute, but just coming on as a guest, it's uh, it's really good of you to give up your time. Yeah, that's more than welcome, more than welcome. Nice to be along. So how are you, Gary? What have you been up to? Because I've seen today, especially, you've been live a few times today on the old Facebook, haven't you? Yeah, what I try and do is interact and bring people into where I just pop up and I just do a few random things as well as the investigations as well. So uh, today was a little pop-up one that I get drawn to and asked along with uh, trying to get to the bottom of some things that's been going on in and around a person's property. So that's what I've been doing today. Oh, was that somebody's personal personal property today then? Was that somebody's house? Yeah, but it's more of the land of what's gone on there. For It was a, the old original Chester Old Road, uh, which went obviously from Chester up to Buckley towards Harden and North Wales. So it was oh, pretty... I've been there today, well, this weekend. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So uh, again, I get to the bottom of the stories and find out what's gone on on the lie of the land and can go back uh, many a year from whatever date the first energies want to come through right up to present date. So it's a case of breaking it down of what era you're in or what decade you're in at the time as well, who's coming along to communicate with me. So with today's then, was that was that like um, a family calling you in for like a private case? I'm it, saying the word like a lot tonight as well, and I have no yeah. idea why. I do apologise. That's okay. Uh, I, f- I feel it was just... Uh, try and pick up what he sensed in the stories that he's been told in and around as that he's been local to that area for a long time so it was a case uh, originally it would have been an old building it's been redeveloped been rebuilt in and around the farmhouse that he's in now uh, but the stories that he's heard over the years he just wanted to see if I could pick up on anything that he's been told and obviously that came around and about with the three or four videos I've put on today and where they've been around, uh, been picking up on uh, some of the stories. And I think I've blown them away on a few things as well with uh, what I've actually said to him today. So he's been a bit mind blown, blown I, today. I did catch you live for about five seconds earlier. Um, did you get anything then? What Did you pick up on anything? What, what, what are we talking? Uh, well, we was talking a lot to do with Gladstone, the old MP, from the Prime Minister from 1880s, 1860s, 1880s and uh, the lie of the land that he had owned that property in that area that I was called to. But again, I've had Queen Victoria around me for the last two or three weeks spiritually and I want to get to the bottom of actually there's been something signed or there's been a meeting behind closed doors because them two didn't get on. And I will look into that a little bit further away from the land, but I will... You know, I've been drawn to properties of Gladstone's today, been to his library and stuff like that as well in Harden, and I've been to the castle. So just trying to catch up and put the final pieces uh, together because it doesn't happen just all at once when you're there. It'll piece up over the next few days and weeks as well. Mm -hmm. You you did say that you were going to go and watch the film. Have you managed to go and watch that? Uh, I do want to go and watch Mary Queen of Scots. I haven't had time yet to... 
presence. So uh, I will try and go and see that this week. Yeah, because I think you were saying to me at some point that you might have, uh, you might find some some clues in that film as well. Yeah, and I know it was uh, quite mind blowing with the films and the links. I I'm drawn with the bloodline at present to the current queen, but I do feel there's more underlining stories to come out and to be told by spirit. Uh, I visited the amazing Warwick Castle on Friday night investigation. And how was that? Oh, it was just, it was jaw dropping. It was just, it was just amazing just to say you've been there and visited, never mind, investigated there. It is a beautiful location, isn't it? Oh, it was just, and so made so welcoming by the staff and, uh, and the public that came along was, it was just a top draw night. It was just an amazing evening. So did you get invited along to that event? Yeah, that's part of uh, Nubis Paranormal, who I help uh, go along on their uh, team Paranormal nights quite often. Uh, they're quite local to me, and uh, we raise quite a bit as well for charity, for the homeless and stuff like that as well. Mm-hmm. That's nice, when you can pay something back. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about. You know, it's uh, done quite a few charity events over the years as well. That's Just- good, because... Sorry, I think I think Dave mentioned, didn't he, Gemma, before that he was going to do a charity night and that we was going to go somewhere. And I think Gary was Gary's name was mentioned. Oh, excellent! Yes, I, I, I did one with Dave last year at uh, Northwich Plaza for Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. and was there with Eamon Van Harris and Sarah and Phil Wyman as well. Uh, that's uh, that's good. So, what activity did you happen to? to receive on on friday night <laughs> uh, quite a few little bizarre things as uh came across a shift shaper there uh, but seemed to be in one room and then when people were getting tried to be split off and drawn to that room uh, other things were going on as if it was coming in from the opposite side so there was quite a lot of trying to pull you in different directions even though it was trying to come and overtake and overpower and come in very, very close. Uh, and I'd say upset the apple cart a little bit with this one energy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was greeted at the castle door as if I'd had boiling water thrown over me or oil. And then I felt like I got pelted by a big rock even before I walked into the castle. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that came along and uh, that came out and about as well because... Obviously, I'm a transfiguration medium, a trance medium. So we put a few members of the public in trance and communicated with the spirit directly as well. Is that what you did with me at Hat Green? It certainly was. What I try and do is introduce the mannerisms, the emotion of the spirit energy that's communicating with me, get it to come in really close to you, into your aura, and mix and blend with you receiving and then talking back to me, either through your voice box or... Uh, just simple yes and no answers with uh, like a human pendulum as well. So we can do it that way as well. See, that that was really interesting. That fascinated me. I'd never actually seen um, trans mediumship before. Um, and in all fairness, I still haven't actually really seen it because I was in it. So it, it's hard to stand back and, and watch it. Yeah, it's um, like you get the link of the medium, basically. and And it's just like... Uh, you getting the link of the medium to the spirit energy that's communicating. So you're making like a little triangle within the link that's going on. Uh, sometimes I have had three, four or five people in trance at once with a group of spirits that came through all at once as well, which can be quite difficult and you've got to be safe at the time as well of the location you're doing that in. I was just going to say, how how do you manage that when you've got a group of people that have all gone into to like a trance like state how how do you manage that safely i work with my team i work with my guides uh, i can break and stop that link at any point so everyone's perfectly safe yeah so if you think of uh if someone's going to a, an open sash window or someone's walking towards uh say a derelict area in a building or a room or a cellar and it's just a case of being in control and uh you know, being professional at all times. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, how many guides have you got, Gary? Because I know I know quite a few mediums and, and they all have like a different number of guides and they use the guides for, for different purposes. So 
I'm just I'm just going to inquire a bit about that if you don't mind. I do want to have I do have one master guide. Uh, he's actually a very tall gentleman. He's got links with Stirling Castle. Um, he's about a good eight eight and a half foot tall. Um, and I do work with Archangel Michael. I've also got a young black lad from South Africa that I work with. He's quite a young, energetic energy guide as well. So I don't mean if I'm flagging at any point, he seems to come in and around and give me that extra boost to get me through a certain session or a certain hour. If I'm, you know, like if it's three or four o'clock in the morning, they seem to come in and give you that boost as well. Oh, I think everybody needs a bit of a boost at three, four in the morning anyway, don't they? You do start flagging by that point. Yeah. Usually Haribo's though, isn't it, usually? <laughs> oh. Well, you'd say that. I've got a stash of Haribo's in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I can tell you, Gary, is never, ever give Joe Harry Bowes on an uh, investigation. I'll leave him there and stash him away for that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? There's nothing wrong with giving me Harry Bowes. Oh, uh, if you want to try it, Gary, you're more than welcome. Yeah, be like a little chatterbox, ongoing chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much of a chatterbox. <laughs> But if you're flagging, you might need a bag of Ali Bows. So Yeah, most definitely. So how many magazines over the years have you been featured in, Gary? Uh, quite a lot of them are Chatted Fate magazine. I've been in about three or four or four magazines of that. Uh, and I've done the Sunday Star as well. I've uh, done local newspapers uh, in and around the Cheshire area as well for investigations and things I've came across as well. And what's your most memorable story to date? Uh, I always think of uh, getting to the bottom of the end of the story. So I had uh, Bolton Abbey was one where I was called by a lady dressed in white where obviously she wanted crossing over and help and support of the way she was treated in her times. And the simplistic way of uh, just going out of your way and travelling 100, 200 miles to, to help them. Yeah, I can call them in and do it from home. But I feel the actual location and the presence of actually being there, it just helps helps with the situation, helps them feel at ease as well, uh, as well. Just getting to the bottom of it. So, a lot of it, I think, Bolton Abbey was an amazing experience because I actually written everything that was going to go down, four or five specific things in an evening. I written it in an envelope before <coughs> we got there, and at the end of the night, I'd obviously give the envelope to uh, one of my friends, and I said, "Can you open the envelope now?" And then everything that came around and about tied in with what we was given by spirits as well. And the people of the spirits that came across to communicate uh, came out within the story as well. That's fantastic, that, isn't it? And I think I think we did say that we were going to do that with Gemma, the next investigation that we were all going to be on. We're going to do that at the start of the night, aren't we? Just, just get drawn to... Uh, how you feel the night's going to go or if you're going to be drawn to a male or a female, a boy or a, a young child and just trust your guide and your intuition of what's coming in and around and you'll be surprised what gets drawn to you as well. Yeah, because you do quite a lot of development um, classes, don't you, as well? Yeah, and I've helped uh, quite a lot of people who've, uh, in the past as well because I've been in that situation where you know there's a lot going on but you can't quite find your path of what's the best way for you to work in so it's helping people understand that every medium works in a different way or every psychic works in a different way um, and again understanding of what what their best strengths are and then everything else that comes along for them as a tool in the locket is a, is a bonus So how did you, de- I'll try that again. I'm just going to put my false teeth in and, and then we'll start that one again. How did you discover that you had this this medium ability? Yeah, what happened with me is basically <laughs> I've seen too much too quick too soon as a youngster. Uh, I was five when I had my first experience with spirit and that was linked with the past life and i seen myself in a past life uh, I was playing with the ball, football outside, and I went over to pick my ball up. And as I bent down, I could see an open grave, but I could see me in the grave looking up at me. But I was in the grave looking through my eyes back at Gary. So that was quite a shock. 
Uh, and I believe when I've talked to my, obviously, my Reiki masters, they've said that that should never have happened. But it was a good awakening as a test to see how I've developed over the years with a lot of deja vu and tied everything in over the years as well to be cool, calm and collective around the situations as well of what was being put before me over the years. I mean, that must be horrific. That first experience, how old was you? Five? Five, yeah. So to have that experience at the age of five, I don't... I don't even know how you cope. It was it was a stop moment. It was uh, like time stopped. It was just like I would say surreal. So even when you've seen like uh, any horror programs in the past and you've never experienced or seen a certain amount of horror films, and I don't get drawn to a lot of horror films, but what it was just like the first horror experience Mm. of that jaw dropping and going oh my god what's going on now someone please help me but I was frozen still couldn't move can you imagine how did you how how did you get over that how did you you learn to understand that at the age of five I think then from what happened then I found I was getting heightened senses with my gut intuition uh, and everyone from me a medium comes a lot of things come from the gut and you throw your energies out there and you blend with what's going in and around you as a medium. I, I just feel that uh, it's, I think you do put your head down and lock yourself away from it. Uh, like turn your head the other way when you're sensing stuff as a youngster. So I think you do brush it off as well. But obviously I had over the years where I was bumping into people and then within two weeks, it was like they were gone. So I was experiencing that as well. So I was coming in and around family members, that time frozen in, in the moment. What's all that about? Why have I stopped talking in mid-conversation? And within two weeks, that that person would have been gone. So I wasn't the Grim Reaper. I just, my team, my six senses were saying, you know, you're not really going to be seeing much more of this person in and around you from their soul. So I think I was linking in with their soul and their spiritual team and their guides as well with communicating with mine, but me not knowing and linking into my guides. Mm. Be fine. So at that, what, what sort of age did you start developing this gift? Well, to be honest with you, I obviously brought up a lovely family for, uh, for a long time, obviously, but... I found I played football for about 35 years, so I focused and concentrated on that at uh, like a, a good level of standard of football. And then as soon as I finished football at 37, uh, I had a lot of experiences in the path as well as I was growing up. I've, come a, I've been in a couple of disasters and uh, I've actually run out of places in the past before a disaster has happened, uh, even be it 12 months prior. And, uh, again, I was being told stuff before it was happening as well. I mean, you know, like people said for, for years about Twin Towers, but I was getting things like that, and it, that was unfolding as well. So it was a case of, like, shock, horror, stand back, and then when it happens, it's like, yeah, I already know, I already knew. Did you yeah. ever write anything down, though, just to kind of validate that, or did did you not bother? Well, I went to, the first experience was in 85 when I went to High Soul, because obviously I'm a big Liverpool fan. And as we set sail from Dover, I just said to me, mate, I want to go home. And he said, what? I said, I want to go home. And I said, it's just not going to be good. So that was my first, one of the first ones as well. So that was quite harsh to take on board. Yeah, I can imagine. And Yeah, I don't think I'd uh, be... Strong enough, if you like, if that's the right word, to deal with that on a regular basis. But because you're with your friends, you go through that. And then obviously a lot of people have lost their lives. And obviously I I did see a lot that that evening as well unfold. And it's it's very hard, do you know what I mean, for anybody to see them lose their lives as well. Um, It's very hard. Now, you see... This is going to sound awful. So for anybody listening, please do not take this the wrong way. Um, But I've seen lots of people die. It was my job for for years to to be with people as they're taking their final breath and to make sure that they were suitable 
for the undertakers to to come and take them. So you done all the, the chapel arrest? Yeah, done. yes, yeah. So I I I did pre death, death, and then after death. Yeah. Um. And sitting with somebody while they're dying can be as strange as it sounds. It can be very rewarding. But on the other side of that coin, it can also be heartbreaking. Oh, yes, definitely. I think what I've learned over the years is to take my emotions out of things and deal with things with strength in and around the spiritual world. And uh, a little uh, thing that came along with that, I went to see a band in Liverpool in the O2 and we were sat in Mar Edgerton's in the famous pub where it's had a lot of famous people in there over the years. And a gentleman was just having a quiet drink away. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I could see his soul coming away from him, obviously, because he's preparing to go elsewhere, his soul. And that person, again, would not have been around within a few weeks of that happening. So I could see his soul would be going searching for the next step, you know what I mean, for the next life as well. So uh, when I'm with another Reiki master and we've both seen that at the same time and we both said, have you just seen what I've seen? And we both give confirmation of that as well it's uh it can be quite quite strange as well but i do know my path i am a helper i'm a healer Mm. yeah how does that differ to you joe because you're a medium too yeah it differs um because i well i'm still i'm quite a caring person as you know Gemma. so i do actually think that i'm well gary is actually helping me as well Because even though being a medium and I communicate with people who've passed, I've kind of realised that I need to kind of take a step back from that and actually develop myself a little bit more. So Gary's kind of really kindly offered to help. So, but with my nature as it is, you know, I think that I'm being pushed because obviously I did my beauty therapy, didn't I, with all the massage and everything else like that. And Mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of I think it's that route where I'm going down, going down kind of the Reiki side of things and 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 getting to grips with with that side, the healing and, and things like that. So it's it's all opened up like this whole new world at the minute for me because obviously I'm just so used to just going into somewhere and picking up on past people and you know even picking up on people who are who are living and present and you know actually seeing things that you know I've kind of prophesized so to speak but it's just kind of opened up another avenue for me to do to do something else as well which I'm I'm finding it exciting because like you you've you've kind of started to research quite a lot of cases and opening yourself up spiritually and I've kind of taken that you know taken that sort of like upon myself and thought do you know what I need to I need to kind of do something else and and Gary's you know been helping me and you know it all starts from within really doesn't it so like you've just said um I I wanted to develop myself I mean don't get me wrong I am an amazing investigator there ain't no doubt about it I am fab at it sounds big-headed but it's true so you know it's just the way it is but yeah I I want it to be more more knowledgeable not just on the paranormal investigation side of things but researching cases properly and and digging digging deeper and, and going down mm-hmm. that rabbit hole so so as you said you know that's what I'm currently working on on my self-development but if you think that you've got some sort of a gift when it comes to um, mediumship in any single way, shape or form, how do you develop that? Where do you go? What sort of things do you do? When... I always say, like, to me, I don't preach meditation, but meditation is the link to the key to the other realm. So the more that you're in tune with the time, balancing and cleansing, then you're more open to receive as well. See, meditating's great. Anyway, I meditate pretty much every day especially if I'm having like a really bad anxiety day I will take myself off and meditate and people find it really difficult to just think of nothing to completely clear the head people find it really difficult but the more you do it the easier it becomes yeah definitely definitely so for me like meditation is just a daily thing yeah I mean I've seen some amazing mediums out there as well that 
some of them work on higher vibrations. Some have to meditate to really high tuned meditation uh, music and stuff like that as well. So they work in different vibrations. Um, but I always ask for things to unfold and really give me their time, the dates, the history from as far back as it can go as well. So my most important thing that I always say is we never stop learning. No. And I think sometimes it gets difficult because when you do get that information and you're trying to, you know, when your rational brain tries to to actually decipher that for you, it is difficult, isn't it? And that's what I struggled with when I first started was like, oh, it doesn't mean anything to me and trying to rationalise it. And then all of a sudden it was just like, it's not even up to me to rationalise. It's it's up to the person that I'm currently talking to. So it's kind of like now you just say what you see. And it's, it is a bit like the catchphrase, you know, sometimes it is putting the pictures together and, and trying to unfold the story. But, um, but developing, you know, I'm constantly developing, you know, going to the spiritualist church and, you know, it, it's strange how when, because obviously you've asked me before, Gemma, how, do, how would you develop? And, mm. you know, you can read books, you can, you know, you can sit down, you can meditate, you can go to your spiritual, you know, spiritualist churches out there and there will be some development classes that you, you might be able to join in on or there might be private development circles and, and things like that. But then I think obviously we were at, um, we were in a, a, a public place and there was quite a lot of, uh, you know, stigma attached to development circles and things like that when people were saying, you know, we we had that conversation, didn't we? And it was it was kind of like I'm being diplomatic now as well, by the way. So um <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I mean. So but that conversation to me was a conversation that that didn't need to happen. And you know I'm learning my own way and, and, you know, development circles and things like that don't really help me. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of hinders me more than anything because I, I can't work at somebody else's pace. I need to work at my own pace. And, and obviously Gary will know from experience, not everybody learns at the same pace. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, I when I do development classes, I'll have uh, straight away people that's, coming along for the first uh, development class and I can take people of that's really, really advanced, but I can balance it out so the evening will be overtaken by spirits where certain things are given to the higher class members and certain developments of the class are given to the, the newer developers where mm-hmm. it always works out right across the board and spirits always put things into place for their learning specifically. Usually I trust a lot with spirit Mm -hmm. and the right spirit energies always seem to come along so it just flows anyway and all levels of both beginners and higher level uh, pupils and students and stuff like that learn and as long as they're learning and developing the spirits will always put things in front of them where it works out for every one of them individually as well. So would you say that everybody has the potential to become a medium? Yes, everyone. Even with closed doors and shut down people, it's mm-hmm. there's a time and a place and uh, for them to receive if they're having a family, uh, say a family member, loved one gone, they might be a, a person that's not a big believer. But if you give them something from a loved one on the other side, then it's like, oh, right, where's that come from? But I'd never go up to anybody out the blue and give that. It'd always be the right time and the right place, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you have to respect people as well you know I can imagine that that'd be difficult but what do you do when you get a message and it's not very nice uh, I've never actually given a anything really negative in and around say reading or anything like that so uh, usually this is where I come into my own little field with the paranormal the paranormal world is basically my heightened field basically and it's understanding of if somebody's aggressive or somebody's overpowering or somebody's angry, they weren't born that way. So I ask them to go back into the middle of the seven levels of light. When they were born, they were in the middle. So whatever's put them into that situation, I'll ask them to explain, well, okay, take your anger away, take frustrations away, come back to me within 10 minutes, come back to me when you're ready to talk. If you're being bombarding me or being over aggressive, I'll just uh, use my, obviously my wizard side of me where I will 
block that energy or I will push it back or I will seal a room up or I will seal a wall up and just put the protection up until that comes forward and is coming forward in a compromising position where it's ready to go, okay, then Gary, understand what you're trying to say to me now. Yeah. Uh, Again, it's all about the control and the professionalism of the understanding. So you've got to get an understanding. So if someone's frustrated, they're frustrated for a reason. If someone's angry. They've got a story to tell. So I'll say, well, go back a year before that's happened. Uh, I think the hardest as a medium was the first time I stepped in and around a spirit that had Alzheimer's. Uh, again, I went into this room and it just felt the energy was spinning and I could actually feel my mediumship side save my brain. I could feel it going, what's going on in here? So I think that's the only time I've ever really had to step out of a room and go to my team, what's just gone on there? And they've said, oh, Gary, the person passed it, passed with Alzheimer's, taken back to three or four years before they had the ailment. And then I started at that point, and then the person could understand where they were, what that room that they'd passed in of what had gone on. But because they'd had Alzheimer's for three or four years, they didn't understand why they were still in and around that environment as well. So when I took them back three, four or five years, when they had good health, I could yeah. communicate with them and, and get the understanding. Of them. And then they were saying, well, all ah, right, I know what's gone on with me now. Because some people are taking quicker than what they're expecting. They don't know what's happened, say a car crash or somebody's had an accident. Uh, I had an, a bit of an experience last night as well. Uh, just watching the Ayrton Senna film, I was just like, oof. And then I just got off my team feedback before the end of the film as well. I was getting feedback from that type of the way that person's passed as well. So sometimes that person pops in and around as well. So you mentioned just then about obviously the wizard side of you. So yeah. do you want to just explain? I don't think we, we touched upon this when we when we first met you at Hack Green, did we? No. But we've obviously, you know, you've just mentioned it now. So what, what actually drew you into being a, a wizard? I think a lot ties in with past lives with uh, from going back to like year zero, uh, being around Mary Magdalene and stuff like that and certain traits. There's, there is a few gaps over the the years from, say, the 500s uh, to 800s. There's time periods from past lives that's not linked in for me yet with the stories. So as I've gone through with uh, a good friend of mine, she's uh, a, a white witch, very pagan, and they said to me, can you help me be a Reiki master? And I said, well, yeah, if you help me get to the wizard side of me uh, from past lives of what I've been in and around in a past life. So that's bringing and developing that forwards as well. So that's how that's come about was just I've developed and, and trained their traits and they've learned me my traits as well. And we've tied in as well. So that's an exchange as well. So it's more knowledge coming in as well. So it's been about the right time and the right place as well. So that's how that's developed. So I've picked up on stuff from past lives of um, learning the lie of the land with land energies, natural ley lines and stuff like that as well. Uh, I'm not as much as a spell person. I am more of uh, if I need to protect and block, I can push energies back and it's like, push the hand out and just basically force things back as well with the wizardry side of it and, mm -hmm. and wait until I'm ready, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, completely. I mean, <coughs> I'm just going to choke now, sorry. <coughs> I think it's like another string to the bow, if yeah. I need to use that side of it. Uh, again, I am drawn to certain places up and down the UK to go and use that type of development that I've learned and put that into practice as well and bring that type of energy in and around me as well uh, certain forests and certain towns and cities there's different times that you might need to be working in a different way other than mediumship way mm -hmm. and how how do your um, friends and family perceive your gift uh, well basically uh, I do think that the children my two children Georgia and Jack they've They've got tendencies and traits to have that side of it themselves. I think more my daughter than my son. Um, again, uh, my parents are just always 
well, Gary's just Gary, you know what I mean? So I don't really talk to him about it that much. I just get on and do what I need to do. Uh, the friend side of it, there's certain amounts of friends. If I go to football, I don't talk shop around the, uh, yeah. the normal world or the mediumship side of it. I'm just going the match and having a few uh, nice quiet jaws. And basically, it, it's been in the right place around them people. I've lost a few good friends when they found out what I did. And then about three or four years later, they've come back and apologised. I, I just couldn't get my head around it. I didn't truly understand. Mm-hmm. I understand over the years because that one person was one person that I was going to over to Belgium in 85 with. So they can see where I was coming from at the time. Do you know what I mean? So that I think they've worked out things over the years as well. And it's gone right. OK, things make sense to them now as well. But they don't totally understand of. Uh, the paranormal world or the mediumship world of things. So how do you feel about um, cold readers, Gary? Obviously, you've got this this gift and you use it for good, as it should be. But there is a lot of cold readers out there that do. It's the same as the paranormal world, you know, that these people come along and it gives everybody a bad name. Oh, just I, So I, how do you cope with that? I, well, basically, if, say, I'm, I'm in a room or I'm, I'm walking somewhere and I walk past somebody, it's you instantly know you, you're drawn to positive, you're drawn to negative, you're drawn to somebody that's off the cuff. And I'm not going to say people that talk BS. I'm just, I just think that there's people out there that you know are true people, you know that they've got true values. So you stick to your values. And to me, cold callers... Um, I've seen certain people or I hear things being said and I'm like, "Uh, have you just said that to somebody? It's just count to 10. I have a count to 10 moment and I relax and I just try and everybody else's views and values are great, but it's the, it's the way that they apply it. It's about, is that the right way to apply it? But I'm only me. I'm not there to upset the apple cart. I'm there to help and nurture. Somebody will, if I'm around somebody that's learning, I can nurture them in the right direction to say, well, uh, you know, I have heard of why some certain teams don't use mediums out there anymore. It's because people were on an investigation and somebody's walked up to them and said, oh, sorry, did your partner had a miscarriage? And the person that they were with didn't even know. Oh, you know? God. So it, but that's just not what it's about. It's not about that. It's no. just... Well, that's some. That's one story I've heard, and that's had a knock-on effect for mediums in and around that person not using mediums. With uh, yeah, I th- I think also this the show that should not be named as well. I think that kind of you know showed a lot of mediums in a bad light as well. Don't you think? I would love to go back to basic with that program. Basically, get your get your rods out, get your K two meters out. Start with the people that's got interested in it because obviously, again, it all got us hooked. It all got us into getting out there and about and, and seeing this other part what's what's going on. But again, uh, it's all about learning. So instantly, if you're seeing certain things like that, you get drawn to watching other things that are there out there. That There's ways and means of people that's drawn into. I always like, like the Jack Osborne. I always like get out there, get raw, get on the road trips, go out as it is on the night and then investigate and just get on with it as it is for people when we all go out and investigate. I do love getting out and investigating, in all fairness. I do absolutely love it. It's like you say, it's going back to basics and it's remembering why you, A, have a passion for the paranormal and and B, meeting new people for me. I love to meet new people. Oh, the people I've met along this this road and this path and this journey has been for say the last nine years now. It's just been it's just been amazing. You don't realise how big the paranormal world is until you're part of it. I can understand the likes of the, the great Colin Fry when I've been to see Colin and met him many a times, and he sits in the power. But when you're in the power within the paranormal worlds and you've got that link and connection, it's just it, it's just it, it's just an amazing feeling just just to have that connection and that link of explaining what's going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
definitely. Um, just just going back to the whole mediumship. Um, I'm completely lost the plot. My head's just completely <laughs> gone blank. What is going on? That's on a good day. <laughs> That's rubbish, isn't it? As if I've just done that. Joe, where was I going? I think you was... I don't know, actually. Where I think because we were talking about development, weren't we? And you were saying, can anybody develop? I think you wanted to kind of... Yes. You know, touch upon that. Yes, yeah, because... It, see, I, this is where I get shoes. in psychic now, you see, because I know exactly <laughs> where you're going. I know exactly what you want to do. <laughs> see, so... Always give what laugh. you're receiving. Give what you're receiving. <laughs> it's, a, a lot of people believe that... that mediumship is just an extra a little uh, teeth again what is wrong with me tonight shocking this i think kerry's gonna have to sack me after tonight's performance people believe that mediumship is just a form of extra sensory perception right where, where do you stand on that uh, in that way of again i wouldn't change people's perspective of what they believe and sense i always like working with skeptics i like to get them to sense feel understand the energies that's going on and get them to experience. Uh, I had a very short gentleman on Friday night at Warwick Castle. Did you sense anything, sir? Did you feel the energies changing in and around you of what I was trying to explain? Yeah, I did, Gary. But that person was, you, nothing will happen to me, nothing will affect me. And that gentleman was just like, yeah, things did go on in and around me and I can take that, which is great. Do you know what I mean? But on your sixth sense, it's just like, uh, again, we, you do experiments, you can blindfold somebody in a room and that can heighten their senses. Great, do it, get on with it. That's what it's mm. all about, trying different experiments. Yeah, yeah, completely. You have to do these experiments. Like last night, I, w- I did a radio show last night with Kerry and Mr Nib and we was on about the um, Estes experiment. Right. Now that... That is one that I I do love doing, in all fairness. But it is it is like you say, you know, it's it is taking away one of your senses, and it does heighten others. It certainly does, and it's just like sometimes where Joe was saying there, you take your perspective of what you're thinking, and that's how you have to learn as well as a medium is to take your thoughts away, put it in another corridor. And then just run, we've got what's coming in and what's going out, because hence the medium. Sometimes I can't remember things that I've said from two hours ago when it's been rolling in and out, because you're not meant to retain half the stuff, because you'd just be on overload or need defragging, you know what I mean, if you remembered everything. Well, you 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 know what I'm like, Gary, and I can't even remember what I was going to say 10 seconds ago, let alone anything else. <laughs> <laughs> No it's problem. hard work it's hard work keeping up in my head sometimes it is it is difficult though and, and it's like you know we, we've said before that people who are who who tend to work in this field you know maybe you know a little bit more prone to to suffering with mental health issues and things like that because sometimes we do keep an awful lot in and you know sometimes you find it difficult to kind of let things go that you've you know you've experienced I mean I said to you didn't I Gemma about that reading that I did a couple of weeks ago and you know it it, it wasn't very nice and it was it was quite harrowing to to actually give that to somebody yeah. over in Northern Ireland and you know it was just everything was just horrendous you've and, got to learn with the emotion side of it that as well yeah why your team have give you that certain information it, it's to gain strength for you to be pushing forwards as well Mm. and I understand that now and it, it kind of it took me quite a while to try and you know shrug it off and you know it's it kind of set I, it set me back quite a lot did that actually and and I wish now I'd never have done it but you know I've learned the hard way so yeah. to speak but it's it's that, that's what I'm you know you do kind of I think I'm quite empathic as well I always like to you know I always try and understand other people's feelings and sometimes you know when you do things in the goodness out of the goodness of your heart you you don't realize sometimes that the knock-on effect that that might have and yeah. it's you know it's it is it is horrible but yeah I'm I'm slowly learning 
But everything I've always done has always been of the good intent. So you're, you're telling your team before you go out there, anything you give or receive, you're doing it with the good intent. So you're mm-hmm. putting it out with the good intent. You will receive more as well because you're there to push all this information on and push all the, the information out there as well. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got um, Mandy in the chat room tonight, Gary, um, and Hello. she's saying that she completely agrees um, meeting people in the paranormal world is a way of meeting new friends as well. Um, and she said that she's met more friends from the paranormal part of her life than any other. Excellent. And that's what it's all about. You can never have enough friends. Do you know what I mean? If you've got friendship out there, it's it's just nice to be adhered to and nice to be acknowledged as well. So when you've got more friends, there's more friends that you're learning and you're building, you're expanding and, and the web just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Especially so, when they're into the paranormal too, because then you can throw ideas around and... Well, that's what I'm trying to do is when I do a live feed, it's trying to bring people in that can't go out or can't afford to go to a venue or can't travel, uh, possibly uh, housebound or anything like that. Just I ask them to take uh, snapshots of I've had some amazing captures from members of the public. And that's what I'm trying to do is give them that interaction Mm. of uh, being being there and part of it without being there as well, because they're watching it, they're linking in and know a lot of people have got all the the smart TVs now and oh, I'm watching you on telly and I, I, I've got all this going and, and they're interacting and they're, they're, they're taking the screenshots and I've had some amazing captures off the public because when you're there at the time, you might have somebody behind you, but somebody will, will snap that and do a screenshot and it's like, there you go, that's that energy I was talking about so you can try and explain things as well when you get back later on, you know, the validation. Um- side of it yeah and that's what it's about isn't it it's about the the explaining it is about the validation Uh, mandy's just said that the one thing that she does wish is that it it was more bigger um sorry i've not got my glasses on i can't really see it one thing i wish was more bigger and that's parent para unity so she wishes that the whole para unity world was was more in tune and as one I think where we was talking about that as well, I, I am linked with about 13 paranormal teams as well. We do a lot of paranormal unity uh, and we're trying to promote that. But I, it's not about an organisation or a body. I feel that somebody needs to organise something that we're a part of. And I always said it like last week was like if we had like a caravan club and you get your discounts or you can get your, your, your people and your public and your foot passage through the doors at a cheaper rate to help them come and experience the night we always do a lot of things on uh, what the venue is we'll try and push that out for price wise where we're a non-profitable organization and we'll try and give it as low as possible what it castle was 45 pounds mm. uh, i think a day visit is about 28 pounds plus they've had a whole run of the building to themselves yeah it, it, it's all about with the paranormal unity it's like i think it can go so far but we need some type of, I wouldn't say governing body, we need just some type of thing that people can trust and go, well, if we're part of that people that's running a certain thing and we can trust them, again, they can branch out and put us into contact with all these other people of linking them in with the places to go and uh, explaining of try that place or go up north and and get them really involved. Like we've booked Jamaica in for October yeah, it, it, it's so it's not sold out. But what I mean, I think there was two places left. But that was a team invest only. But it's just about experiencing of going to these places that you've heard about for many, many a year. But to get out there and be a part of it is is another thing as well. But of the community side of it, I mean, I, I've got friends now in America. I'm getting loads of people from uh, Jamaica, Thailand, uh, Sweden, Finland, Canada. The UK, Ireland, so there's a lot pulling in together with the paranormal world as well. So again, it's just growing and expanding, and I think with communication these days, it, it, everyone's closer. Yeah, well, there's more more options and more ways of communicating now, isn't there? Uh, Des is in the chat room. He's just said that he thinks that Parry Unity has grown tenfold in the last year alone, um, which I tend to agree. It, it has got better. But in all fairness, it just takes one thing for everything to come crumbling down, in my opinion. Um, 
certainly... Not everybody is going to agree on everything, you know? That's just the way yeah. the cookie crumbles. But that's what we say is, like, anybody's view or perception on things is that's their view, that's their perception. Like myself, I wouldn't over-challenge anyone with their versions of what they've exper experienced in the past. And, again, no two nights are the same. So as you're going along, you say, well, the first time I went to a place, that was quiet, but the next time I went was really busy and active because no two days are the same. So with people are learning and experimenting with things i'd say go back there two or three times a lot of places i go to i might not be there for three or four years but you know you're picking up on more when you go there the next time from yeah i think it, it, it's all about keep going keep getting out there having your views but take their views on board as well mm. so if they yeah, say yeah. So. uh oh, i didn't think much of joe blogs or i didn't think much of this going on in that place go along on a different night in a different venue you might see it with different eyes uh, again, I've had certain people come through on a talking board, which I always said the Ouija boards, but I always call it a talking board because it spells out what a medium's receiving talking wise. And when we was in this venue, somebody was getting a message, and I, I said, Well, thank you, Mum, for coming through. And, you know, it's nice to meet her, but we, if you can ask her to step back now, we'll just get the communication from the building of what we're all here for on the night. I'm not spoiling your night. And it's like, no, 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 I want to keep talking to me, Mum. And I was like, well, yeah, I totally understand that. I'm not saying that. We can do that at any time or any point when we finish the evening. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So you don't just have to cut something there and then. But obviously that person is so over enthusiastic of receiving information from the mum on the other side. It was just mind-blowing for them. And they'd like zoned out from where they were there on that night to do. And, and that. So sometimes you have to take a step back and then obviously let them have their moment as well. And I think that session went on for about 40, 50 minutes as well. Wow. So you've got to give that person their time and the space, even though you've got public there. It was like, yeah. okay, understand where you're coming from. But again, having the professionalism to pick up on your team and say, right, can you take three people? Can you take them off into that next zone? Can we go for a break in 10 minutes? And, and I think that was the first time that I got a member of the team to radio through to say, can we bring tea break through a bit quicker so we can have a longer period? Next, it wasn't that I didn't want to cut the person off from receiving the message. It was so I could leave that person to receive the message through the tea break, basically. Yeah. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So again, it's understanding of what that person's after or what that person wants, but that's what they to give us on the night as well. Uh, exactly, and I always say that at the end of the day, they are not performing monkeys. They are not going to do something just because we've asked them to. If they want to, they will. If they don't, they won't. Spot on. And uh, again, I've worked with, uh, you know, I've done some uh, possessions and stuff like that. I have dealt with demonic from low level up to high level, and that's the way I've been trained. So uh, I think the first one I did was six hours long. Jeez. <laughs> um, wow. And, and that was full on, eyes rolling at the back of the head. I had to strap the person in the chair. <gasps> uh, basically, as soon as I walked in the room, it said, hi, Mr. Fields, I've been waiting for you. Which, again, that demonic energy didn't know I was bringing along other people in my team. And as soon as other people in my team walked in and went, oh, right, OK, have you brought all them as well? I said, well, yeah, don't go not mob handed. It's a case of uh, it was a learning thing for me to learn. You take other people's traits and trends and what they've learned over the years as well. So you've got combined strength to basically overpower that and make sure that that person's son that was possessed was uh, safe and sound. And uh, you, you learn along the way. I've come across a lot of succubuses and stuff like that as well. And uh, there comes a time where you've got to pass certain things on as well. So yeah. not all about me. Uh, I've had communication with uh, people that are in touch from the Vatican, and I've had people in the UK that's phoned up and make phone calls and went, Gary, you're OK. We know where you're up to. You go along and do what you need to do because we know you're going to do it professionally. It's not about – it's having the trust and the faith of the team that you're in and around as well. You know, uh, got demonologists in and around us as well. So it, it's understanding the, the trust and the strength of the team that's in and around you. Mm. Well, it's like a multidisciplinary team, isn't it? People don't see what we actually do behind the scenes, if you get what I mean. They just think it's all, oh, 
Is, is that all you do, just a medium? Well, no, you're about 10, 15 things in one, basically, with the people that's interacting in and around you. Because it, it's a spider's web. You know who to pull in or who yeah. to deal with things. And I've got friends that do travel out of body, and we can team up as well at the night. Uh, if a house needs clearing, we can do that within the night as well. I've just got a couple more questions for you, Gary. We're going to run over again. I am so sorry, everyone. <laughs> hey, but that's I've got... a bonus. I've got Phil Johnston in the chat room and he wants me to ask you about his boss cameraman. Yes, he is my cameraman. (laughs) He was very upset that I couldn't take him along on Saturday night. Obviously, when I get invited by other people's teams, um, basically with Phil and all that, again, I've got to go along with what the organisation or the team that's there. They've got to sell tickets. They've got to sell uh, the venues off as well. So, again, Mm -hmm. sometimes comes down to numbers if that place will only have 10 people then uh yeah but certainly a lot of people i've got going on behind the scenes phil is one of them uh i've got people behind the scenes doing other stuff promoting me i'm on the radio tomorrow at 12 o'clock uh over in northwich uh and again it's just it seems to be constant and stuff going on with amazon prime i've got a few programs on there and uh, basically a lot of people, I couldn't do it on my own basically it's got that yeah. to that stage now what I am after though or interested in is I'm not a high techie guy but I've got so many ideas experiments that I want to put in together I need some contacts now of people to make me some equipment that I've got in my mind like of four or five years ago I was looking at the magnetic boards with with the needle and stuff like that and then obviously before you know it, that time runs out and then that's already put in place. Yeah. So I know what my team want to put past me and what my team want to put into place for me to use for other people to see, sense and experience from. So, I mean, I know another medium said the other week, oh, Gary, he talks a lot, but what it's about is trying to explain as a teacher as well that what I'm receiving, I'm just trying to put it out there so people can understand when I'm talking of what's going on in and around as a medium as well. But Phil and I've got so many people out there that's helping me along on my path. It's just amazing. And this is exactly what it is about, isn't it? It is about teamwork. It is about working together. I can't I can't do it all on my own. I've got a few things in the pipeline for next year. I've been asked to do Alcatraz. Uh, I've been asked to... I take it you're taking me to Alcatraz, right? Well, I've, I've been invited to George Shoplin's uh, place to stay over there as well in America. So, again, it's just timing, putting things into place and planning. So possibly next February, possibly next April time, I'll be looking at that. So we're waiting for the next stage now and the next level to come in. Well, you definitely can't go to Alcatraz and not take me. <laughs> they might not let you off. <laughs> That, I don't think I'd have a problem with that, in all fairness. <laughs> I yeah. think I'd be fine. I think we'd be able to do the show from Alcatraz, couldn't we? Yeah, I'll just take hey. my phone. I, I can still do my radio on a Monday. It's fine. We could do a link. I think uh, as well, what's just come to me, as you've just said, that is uh, you need to do your show from a, a location one night as well. That's what they've just said to me, my team. I'll so gladly nothing putting do that. you on the spot. Nothing putting you on the spotlight, but no, no, it's <laughs> fine. I will gladly do that anytime. Yeah, but I've got some amazing ideas as well. I just want to try and push the next step and push things into place. I'm happy if things happen. Great, fine. It's a bonus. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much answered my my next question as well because I was going to say, so what's coming up for you? <laughs> But you, you've yeah. already answered that. I didn't even have to ask. I knew that was coming, you see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tuning in. I've, I've just, I think I need next year's diary already. I think I've got things in there for approximately November at the present moment. Uh, again, looking at Alcatraz, possibly if that comes around and about, that's with Paranormal uh, Unity and, and Lincolnshire. Spirit Seekers, again, I've got so many teams that I'm in and around and involved in and I've got most of the UK covered now it just means I'm waiting on one team from the south of England to tie in with uh, and then you know I've just got some amazing people uh, Brian Harley up in, in Scotland he's like the grandfather of the paranormal world he was doing this in 1975 
and he was in the paper in 1975. But if you mentioned that in 1975, it was like, oh, look at them bunch of weirdos, you know. Very yeah. I mean? frowned upon back then, wasn't it? Oh, yes, most definitely, yeah. So I've got a lot of great people around me as well. That's fantastic, isn't it? Right, and on that note, guys, it is five past ten, so we are right at five. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much for joining us at last minute. We really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, oh, thanks, Gary. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. And uh, thanks for everyone for the questions and tuning in for you. And everybody in the chat room, thank you very much for being so interactive. We do love it when we have a busy chat room and we're chatting to you guys as well as speaking to our guest. And for everybody listening at home, there is shows on every night of the week. Just head over to Parasearch Radio and check out what's coming up. And if you do happen to miss any shows, head on over to YouTube. They are all on there. And don't forget to click like, share and subscribe. Thanks for listening, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.